by special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, present The Lone Ranger. <laughs> horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Now, here's the Lone Ranger. You'll hear it said that someone was born to the saddle. That means he's a mighty good rider. But remember, like anyone else, he had to learn to ride. He probably took many spills doing it. He's good because he practiced. Rode every time he had a chance. In anything, not just riding. The winners are the fellows who train. Champions are made, not born. I'll agree, Lone Ranger. But is there anything besides practice a person can do to help his training? Absolutely. Eat the right foods. I'd like to pass along something the old pioneers knew. Wheat is one of the best all-around foods you can find for staying power and energy. Today's champions agree with the pioneers about wheat, Lone Ranger. Champions choose Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. Slugger Andrews had escaped from territorial prison with the help of a friend who waited with horses. The two men rode all night and most of the next day. Easy now, easy now. Finally, they walked their horses along a trail a few miles from the town of Hilton. I reckon we're safe enough now, Slugger. You sure took an awful chance, but you made it. Yeah, but I had things figured out close, Jack. I planned that break for months. Watching and checking the location of the guards and all that. What's the idea of heading for Hilton? Got any definite plans? Only living relative lives there. My cousin Maisie. She's a widow and runs the Hilton Cafe. Is she Maisie Andrews of the Big Chance Cafe? Yeah. Maisie just about runs that town. Yeah, I know, I know. What about your plans? Hey, Jack, you remember when you were my cellmate a year ago? I told you about the masked man and the redskin who were the cause of my being in prison? Yeah. You said it was an hombre called the Lone Ranger. That's right. And at my trial, the redskin testified against me. Well, Maisie was there and got a good look at him. What about it? I had a letter from Maisie saying she'd spotted that redskin in Hilton a few times during the past couple of months. That means that masked man is snooping around the territory, too. Well? Maisie's worried for fear they might get a line on the gang that's working for her. You better be careful. They say that masked hombre is mighty smart. Yeah, maybe. But I'm going to try to get him out of the way before he can interfere with Maisie or me. That's why I'm heading for Hilton. Now, come on, let's make some time. Uh, Get up, get up! Maisie Andrews was going over accounts in her office at the back of the cafe around midnight. When she heard a knock at the door. Mm, who can that be? Who's there? Open up, Maisie. This is Slugger. Slugger. Slugger, you made it. Come on in. Hiya, Maisie. Meet a friend of mine, Jack Carey. Howdy, Maisie. Hi. Slugger, I'm glad to have you and Jack, but I got to thinking. The law might come here looking for you. I'm going to shave off my beard and dye my hair. 
Jack and I'll hold up somewhere outside of town till I can get a line on that masked man and Indian. There's a room upstairs where you can stay tonight. After you shave and dye your hair, we'll sit down and have a long talk. The following evening, Tonto, Indian friend of the Lone Ranger, stopped at their camp in the nearby hills. Oh, oh fella. Easy, fella. Any news in town, Tonto? Ah. Me here, fella, break out of prison. Oh, who was the man who escaped? Him, Slugger Andrews. Fella we helped catch two years ago. Slugger Andrews? Ah. Them say him kill guard to get out of jail. Mm. Now that he's wanted for murder, he'll not hesitate to kill others. That's right. His cousin, Maisie Andrews, runs a cafe in Hilton. Uh, me know that. I think Slugger's too smart to go there. But just in case, it's worth our while to make sure. Uh, Kimasabi. Yes? Me go to town tonight, watch at cafe. Keep out of sight yourself, Tonto, as much as possible. He might recognize you. Early that evening, Tonto went to Hilton and entered the cafe. He stood in the shadows at the back and watched the others in the place. He listened intently when Maisie came from her office with a stranger and went to the bar. Sparky, this is a friend of mine. Give him whatever he wants and charge it to the house. Yes, ma'am. It's sure nice of you, ma'am. Don't mention it. When you go back to the cabin, be sure to give him a message. Don't worry. I'll tell him what you said. If there's anything he needs, tell him to be... I forgot something, Jack. Come back into my office a minute. Sure. Tonto hadn't noticed the sudden penetrating look Maisie had thrown his way. And a short time after she and Jack went into the office, the Indian left the cafe and mounted at the hitch rack. He's got easy, fella. Get him up, scout. As Tonto rode from town and headed toward the Lone Ranger's camp, Maisie Andrews and Jack hastily mounted and followed. Come on, get him. Get him. They made sure they were not seen in the bright moonlight. Later, Jack stopped in front of a deserted cabin a few miles from town. Oh, 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 there, boy. Hi. What brings you out here so early? Got some news? Yeah, news you'll like to hear. Maisie saw the engine who testified against you. Good. He was in the cafe this evening. Fine. Maisie and I followed him the other side of town and found out where he and the masked hombre are camping. Well, the rest ought to be easy. Uh, no, you better be careful. Maisie says if you want help, she'll get you the men. All right, come on, let's go. Meanwhile, Tonto told the Lone Ranger what he heard and saw at the cafe. So Maisie told the stranger to give someone a message when he went back to the cabin? Ah, her say, if him need anything, then her stop talking and then go back into office. It's possible that her cousin Slugger Andrews is in hiding outside of town. Ah. I think I'll try a plan that may help us find out. Uh, what you do? I'll disguise myself as a Mexican, take silver and leave him at the livery stable. Then I'll hire another horse. Why you do that? I'll go to the cafe tonight and apply for a job. That way I'll be able to find out about Slugger. Mm, that's plenty risky. Perhaps, but it's worth trying. You continue to camp here in case I need you, Tonto. I'll work on the disguise. Later that night, Slugger and his friend Jack were talking to Maisie in her private office. This is our big chance to get rid of that snooping mask man, Maisie. I don't want anything to go wrong. That's why I came here to talk it over with you. I'm glad you did, Slugger. Did you tell your men what this is all about, Maisie? All I told them was that they're to take orders from you. That you'd take them out to gun a couple of hombres who are trying to get a line on our gang. You won't have any trouble with those men. Good. I'll tell the men to meet you at the hitch rack behind the cafe. Now go out the back way and find that camp. I'll show them where it is. Now don't get too anxious, Slugger. Move in easy-like from all sides. And take them by surprise. Don't worry, Maisie. This is one job we're not going to slip up on. We'll go out there and get the jump on the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend and fill him with lead. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
let's listen to a few seconds of a tune from one of those special Wheaties albums everybody's talking about. Ready? Sparrow in the treetop, sparrow in the treetop, never will be fed. Sparrow in the treetop, sparrow in the treetop, scared of coming down to get the night. How's that for clear, crisp recording? Well, it's just a sample of what you get in these wonderful Wheaties albums. Each has eight tunes recorded on standard weight, 7-inch, 78 RPM records. But the most amazing part of it is this. You can get one of these fine Wheaties record albums for only 25 cents and a Wheaties box top. Four big albums, playtime tunes, folk songs, old favorites, and popular tunes. Take your choice or even get them all for your record collection. Look for directions on the back of the special Wheaties record offer box at your grocer's today. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger, disguised as a Mexican, left the camp and headed for town. Instead of taking the regular trail, he took a shortcut to save time and soon pulled to a stop at the livery stable where he left Silver. Later, he rode a Mustang to the cafe. Hold up, hold up. Here, yeah. Something for you? Well, I've come to see the owner of the cafe, senor. You mean you want to see Maisie Andrews, huh? Oh, the owner of the senorita. <laughs> <laughs> Maisie's big and tough, mister, and she's buried a husband already, if you call that a senorita. Uh, the senora Andrews, is she here, senor? She's in her office, uh, that door right back there. Gracias. <laughs> Come in. Well, Mexican, huh? What do you want? The senor in the cafe tells me, senora, that you're the owner, no? Yeah, I'm the owner, so speak up. What's on your mind? Got a complaint? <laughs> See, senora, it is that the senor did not say you were beautiful. Me? Beautiful? I say, sit down, mister. Gracias, senor. <laughs> By thunder, you fellas from across the border sure know how to treat a lady. Oh, you flatter us, senora. Why have you come to see me, mister? Uh... Uh, the name is Carlos Juan de Matamoros San Fernando. But perhaps you will honor me by calling me just Carlos. <laughs> Man alive, I'd never remember the rest of it, so Carlos it is. I'm Maisie Andrews, Mrs. Andrews. See, I have ear you are a senora. The fair ones are always taken, though. You said that as if it made a difference. But I... Hold on, just why did you come in here, Carlos? Uh, senora, I come to this town. I say, Carlos, this is such nice town. I come into the cafe and say, uh, Carlos, this is a very fine place. This is where I shall work now. So I tell myself, see, then I came to see you, senora. You mean to say you made up your mind you were gone? <laughs> <laughs> By thunder, Carlos, you have a way with you. So you want to work here, huh? Si, senora. What can you do? You good at handling cards? Si, senora, but I am also excellent at handling a gun, I'm told. Now you talk like a gunslinger. <laughs> How do I know the law isn't chasing you? Many times, senora... Others have say that Carlos is perhaps the outlaw. I do not deny. I do not agree. But right now the law does not know I'm here. I know as much now as I did before. <laughs> I think I can use you, though, Carlos. Of course, if you're afraid of getting into trouble... Or... <laughs> trouble? She is something I go hunting for, senor. It keeps one on his toes, no? <laughs> You'll do. Come see me in the morning. I'll let you meet some of the men who work for me. Si, senora. Gracias. Meanwhile, Slugger and the men followed the regular trail until they neared the grove in which the Lone Ranger's camp was located. 
At the camp, Tonto had rolled into his blanket on the ground and went to sleep while he waited for the Lone Ranger. Suddenly, he was awakened by a whinny from his horse, Scout. Scout, give warning. Tonto walked to Scout's side. Then carefully scanned the surrounding shadows for some sign of an intruder. He slowly drew his gun to be ready for trouble. Then a voice startled him. Freeze, Indian! Oh, Drop that gun. The camp is around. Tonto whirled in the direction from which the voice had come. He saw first one figure, then another move into the clearing until several men ringed the camp and were closing in on him. Realizing he had no chance against so many, Tonto spoke. Me drop gun. Come on, men. The engine's here alone. Where's the masked man? Come on, speak up, engine. Him not here. Where is he? Me not know. We'll soon loosen your tongue and get the truth. Are you going to gun him, Slugger? No, we'll take him to my hideout, Captain. Jack, you go tell Major what happened. Ask her to come out there right away. Right. We'll keep this redskin covered and gun him if he makes a move to get away. All right, let's get to our horses and ride. Get along, Indian. Get along, Indian. At the cafe, the Lone Ranger, disguised as a Mexican, sat at the table talking to Maisie. Wait a minute, Carlos. Here comes one of my men. Hey, Maisie, I came to... Oh, maybe we'd better talk in private. No, go ahead. Carlos is all right. He's going to work for me. Oh. Well, listen. Slugger sent me to tell you we got the engine, but the masked only what? wasn't at the camp. Too bad you didn't have sense enough to find out if the masked man was there before you moved in. When the Lone Ranger gets back there, he'll know something is wrong now. And I have ear of the masked man and his Indian friend. Will not be good if you have armed the Indian. The masked man will ah, be... Ah, we didn't hurt the redskin yet. Oh, where is he? They took him to the hideout. They figure on forcing him to tell where the masked man is. I have learned the Indians do not talk if they do not want to, senor. Especially that one. We'll get him to talk one way or another. Slugger wants you to come to the cabin, man. I reckon I might as well. If I don't, Slugger might get riled enough to plug the Indian for not talking. I'm sorry for the interruption, Carlos. But am I not one of your workers now? Why should I not come along with you and meet the others tonight? Well, perhaps I can help you find the masked man you seek. Well, come on if you want to. Jack, get my horse ready. All right, ma'am. I'll go get ready to ride, Carlos. Eh? Hey? Then I'll meet you out front in ten minutes. The Lone Ranger waited until Jack and Maisie left. Then he nonchalantly left the cafe. Once outside, he hurried into the shadows and quickly reached the back door of the sheriff's office. He stood a moment, scribbling a note on a small piece of paper, which he wrapped around a silver bullet. Then he pounded on the door. What's the matter? Who's there? I bring a message for the sheriff. It is most important, senor. Why didn't you come in the front way, then? The sheriff's busy and he's dead. Well, I have reasons for not being seen. You give him this, please, senor. It's very urgent. Oh, all right, I'll give it to him, but... You better come in anyway. Adios, senor. Hey, wait a minute, hey. Huh. You sure scurried out of sight in a hurry. Oh. Well, I'll see what the sheriff makes of this note he gave me. When Maisie and Jack came to the front of the cafe, the Lone Ranger was already waiting beside the horse he had hired at the livery stable. The two men and Maisie mounted and took the trail leading to the hideout cabin. Later, they entered the cabin where Slugger and Maisie's three gun slicks were waiting. Tonto was tied to a chair. Well, I'm glad you got here, Maisie. Who's that with you? This is Carlos. He's working for me. Carlos, meet my cousin, Slugger Andrews. Oh, at last I meet your cousin. Eh? Glad to meet you, Carlos. Look, Maisie, we haven't been able to make that Indian talk. He's sure an ornery redskin. Even some slapping around don't have any effect. Yeah. I'm almost tempted to... Control your temper, Slugger. There must be some way to get him to tell where that masked man is. Well, I have heard of a way to make Indians talk, Maisie. You have? How? It is with the knife. <laughs> they fear the knife at the back. Wait, I shall prove my point. See, I hold the knife in my hand. I walk behind the Indian. The others watched expectantly as the Lone Ranger walked slowly behind the chair to which Tonto was tied with his hands and back. All of the crooks had holstered their guns. Well, Carlos, go on. We're waiting to see how you make out. If you get him to tell where the Lone Ranger is, I'll pay you a bonus. I do not think I'll fail, Maisie. Hey, what are you doing with that knife? <laughs> the point of the knife drawn along the wrist, like so, senor. 
It is most effective. Let him alone, slugger. Go ahead, Carlos. Maisie and the men were several feet away, and in front of Tonto, the Indian's body hid the knife in the Lone Ranger's hand. He will soon break down, talk amigos. Watch. As he talked, the masked man drew the keen blade across the rope which bound Tonto's wrists. Oh, Tonto winced as if in pain. Hey, look, at last the Indian's showing he's afraid. Keep it up, Carlos. Get him talking. Tonto felt the ropes give. Then the Lone Ranger purposely dropped the knife to the floor. Oh, caramba. I am getting so clumsy. As the masked man bent to pick up the knife, he slipped one of his guns into Tonto's hand. Slugger suddenly spoke out. I saw that, Carlos. By 30, you're double-crossing us. Reach, all of you. We both have guns. That's right. Carlos, what's up? Hey, that boy, Slugger, I'd know it anywhere. I'll gun him. Hold it. Hey, grab your guns, men. I'm with you. You not shoot. Oh, no. The Lone Ranger and Tuttle fired simultaneously as Slugger and one of the crooks started to draw, wounding them both. Hold it! We got everyone covered oh, for sheriff. If that hombre tricked me, I'll get him. Got that gun, Maisie. If you don't buy thunder, I'll plug you, even if you are a woman. Huh. I think you would at that. Keep them all covered, man. I got your note, mister, with the silver bullet in it. We followed you out here, and we rode up quiet like till we heard shooting. That slugger Andrews, all right. He's wanted this time for murder. Well, me hear him talk, Sheriff. Woman, leader, gang. Well, we'll take Maisie along with the rest of them. we we'll get them all to talk, and when the truth comes out, she'll go to jail for a long time. I never thought I'd be fool enough to fall for flattering words from any hombre. Then he came along, talking and looking like a Mexican, and tricked me. How to hate him for that. You might have been a fine woman if you hadn't turned crooked, Mrs. Andrews. <laughs> As Carlos would say, you have a certain amount of beauty and charm. Sheriff, Tonto and I'll leave now. We'll see you later after I remove my disguise. Adios, everybody. Adios. 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 Hey, did you hear what he said about me? Beauty and charm. Ha! Look, you chunkhead, maybe he didn't mean it. But it'll be something I can think about while I'm sitting in jail. I was dreaming of a hacienda in old Mexico an hour after I met Carlos. I mean him. (laughs) You'll have plenty of time to dream, Maisie. Plenty of time. You and Slugger should have learned long ago that you can't outthink or outdo the Lone Ranger. Outlaw's cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Everybody loves Cheerios. So delicious. Because it's made from toasted oats, all ready to eat with milk. And the go power it gives you. You see, each spoonful of Cheerios and milk is packed with vitamins, proteins, and minerals. The very things your body needs for healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is real muscle-building food. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.